you don't like Trump. I'm like, I used to like Trump until I seen that he was a racist, you know, and I was seeing all the news clips and all that. They're like, bro, he's not, bro. You got to go and watch the stuff, watch all of the rallies and watch all of his speeches in their entirety. So I started doing my homework. It took me about two weeks. I'm watching all these different, you know, uh, videos of the whole speech where they said that he said things and they, I watched how they took it completely out of context and it blew my mind. So at the age of 23 years old, I'm 35 now. At the age of 23, I loved Trump at that time. Like I even made my first music, my second music video in Trump Tower in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So everybody liked Trump at that time. So then it made me start thinking like, when did I start to think that he was a, a racist? You know? And then when I started watching all of what he was saying. No collusion, no obstruction. I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, or the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation. The, the oranges, how it started. And I've seen the clips in their entirety. It changed my perspective. I'm like, yo, the media is lying. So then I, then I started to understand what, what he meant when he said fake news. My stupid people, when I wanted to refute it, they said, sir, don't dignify it with a rebuttal. Have you been noticing peculiar behavior recently in someone you know? So then as I'm listening and proving that these clips was taken out of, completely out of context, I'm listening to everything he's saying in the speeches and I'm agreeing your behavior recently and someone you know Terry Knight by Ray someone who mixes fiction and reality the late great Hannibal Lecter is a wonderful man perhaps someone of advanced age you have known for years did you just see Maduro in Venezuela though it's an unbelievable Venezuela of course we all have our goofs but consistently odd behavior can be a sign of frontotemporal dementia and I'm like yo this is right this is real right we do need this this what the hell oh I agree with this so then it was just like okay am I doing my homework to show whether he was racist or not I actually ended up agreeing with damn near everything that he was saying about what we need to do here in America to make mm -hmm. America great again. So then I just became a full-blown Trump supporter after listening to every speech. Like, it was like, <laughs> was everything, and I'm like, this guy makes too much sense. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny how um, the, the, the magic of that works, because I fell for that bullshit, too. Um, and to be honest with you, I didn't take Trump serious when he first was running for president uh, back in 2016. I was pushed, pulling for uh, Jeb Bush, because, you know, I'm an old-school conservative, right? I was like, you know, I didn't like the bushes. I didn't <laughs> like the bushes. The only bush that I that I started to like was was a uh, baby bush after he, you know, after the 9-11 response. But then as I got older and started looking into that, I'm like, no, I can't stand this dude. It was all about him getting paid. That was all that was about. Yeah. So, and that was yeah. that when Trump called that out. I was like, what? And then yeah. what solidified it for me is when he made that speech and said that uh, black people, uh, African-Americans, what do you have to lose? Go with me. You know, he just gave the real conditions of. This is absolutely classic. I had to do a video about this because I've been talking about this for years. This is the classic thing of how Americans are so lost politically, the stumbling around in the dark. What this guy just described is something that happens all the time, and it's not just a right-wing thing. You have people who are being deceived and being misled, and at some point in time they have an awakening and realize that they're being misled and they're being deceived about something. And then they get so sort of allergic to this, so outraged that they will run as far away from that thing as possible and right into the arms of something even worse. I mean, if I could give an analogy, you're homeless in the woods and you find some tent with a bunch of people in there and there's food in there and you go in there and you're hanging out in there and you're living in there. And at some point in time, somebody opens your eyes and says, there are wolves in this tent. Right. You saw something that might have been a little fishy to you, but weren't sure what it was. And they're like, no, those are wolves. And they pointed out to you and you see, wow, there's actually wolves in this tent. And you're like, I can't be living with wolves. And you get so outraged that you run full speed out of that tent and you're telling everybody those t that tent has wolves in there. Don't go in there. And you're just running full speed. All your attention is on these wolves you want to get away from. And then bam. Right. Bam. You run right up into nice and soft and furry black bears right you run up into a camp filled with vicious black bears that will rip you to pieces and you're living there eating up the food and all the while you're not looking at the black bears you're not talking about the black bears you're still talking about the wolves that you ran away from you're like those wolves over there those wolves those wolves those wolves meanwhile any second now you're about to have your head ripped off by a goddamn black bear that's what americans do i mean it's like people who you know, they trust mainstream media for years and then they have this awakening where they realize how much lying and manipulation happens in mainstream media. And then they run from the wolves straight to the black bear, right? Far more dishonest, far more biased, independent media who only focuses on 
pointing out the flaws in mainstream media, right? They talk about all the things that mainstream media is not covering. Meanwhile, they don't cover a bunch of stuff that mainstream media is covering. Their whole gimmick is they don't want to talk about this, they don't want to talk about that. Meanwhile, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they don't want to talk about that mainstream media is talking about because that's their gimmick, right? They're going to focus on punching holes on their competition to, to get you all suckered in so they can make money off of you, right? So you have right-wingers, right-wing media that will point out the lies of liberal mainstream media and they're not talking about this. And sometimes, you know, they'll exaggerate. Like they call in Trump racist and they don't have actual evidence that he's racist, right? No direct evidence. Just throwing the term around loosely. Right-wing media will gladly point that out and say, look, they're calling him racist and uh, look what the basis is. They, they, they just, they're just making stuff up. Right. They will look at stuff that maybe maybe Trump actually did something positive or the Republicans actually did something positive and then liberal media won't cover it. But conservative media, they love to cover it because that's their whole gimmick to talk about what they don't want to talk about. Right. So they have people who will be susceptible to this type of manipulation. Right. So while you're blinded by them highlighting all the tricks that mainstream media is doing, you don't realize that they're doing the same thing times 10. There's a whole bunch of context that right wing influencers are hiding from you. Right. Only showing Trump in a positive light. So you ran away from mainstream media lies to go to 10 times more lies from right wing media, independent media. That's what's happening. So this guy talks about and this is something I keep telling, you know, left wing media folks and progressives, but they don't want to listen. Right. That's how partisans are. That's how tribalism is. Right? they don't want to listen. I keep telling them you got to be accurate in what you're saying. I mean, it's good that you guys are generally the more honest side of independent media. Independent media in this country, very dishonest, very partisan, very tribal. But left wing media is far more honest than right wing media. I'll just give you one isolated example. Right now, Biden is their guy, right? He is their guy. They wanted other people, but he's the only one right now, right? That can sort of, you know, uh, as in their camp. I mean, Biden is really not in the left wing's camp, but the alternative is Trump and it can't be Trump, right? So. Trump winning is a disaster for the left, right? That being said, since Biden is their guy, I mean, that, that's just it. There's nothing they can do about it. But meanwhile, left-wing media is constantly attacking Joe Biden on a regular, calling him out on the Gaza situation, calling him out on the things he promised that he didn't deliver on, right? You never get that from right-wing media. Can you imagine? Like, look at right now. We're, we're down to, the, to the, 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 the final hour. Can you imagine right-wing media going after Trump so close to the election? It ain't happening. They try to get rid of him some time ago where they had time to recover, right? But now that it's a close election, they ain't trying to talk nothing negative about Trump, right? Because their integrity is far lower than left-wing media. Left-wing media will on one hand realize the dangers of Trump while at the same time, they'll be attacking their only chance of stopping Trump, right? They choose to be more closely aligned with reality and truth, right? against their own interests. They don't want Trump to win. Well, some of them do because Trump winning is more chaos and more chaos means better content. That's a whole nother subject. But I keep telling them, you guys need to be accurate when you're saying stuff. Don't just throw around the word racism. If someone, racism is is a mentality, right? If I don't know, I can't read your mind. So unless you're overtly racist, I gotta be very cautious about throwing that word around because there's a lot of reasons for people to be assholes, right? Issues with skin is only one of the many, many reasons. So I, I, I do not advocate for throwing that word around loosely. Trump, for example, I don't really, I mean, you could go back in time and look at the Central Park Five and stuff like that. There was some stuff with, with um, his real estate things that he did in the past. So an argument could be made that maybe he was racist, but in terms of what he's doing now, listen, when you're using your words loosely like that, you are opening the door for people to manipulate others and suck them into something that's far worse, right? There are many people, look at this guy, he didn't like Trump, right? He didn't like Trump. I think, I believe he said he was a Democrat, right? So this is a person who, I know he definitely didn't like Trump, not sure about the Democrat thing, but it's very likely that he was a, previously a Democrat. And even if he wasn't, there's many who were, right? Obama voting Democrats who are now full on Trump supporters. And one of the reasons for this, you guys could try to, you know, uh, put them down and look at them as being stupid or whatever. One of the reasons is when you guys are imprecise, you open the door for them to be seduced into even bigger lies, right? That's the doorway. You're opening the portal for them to get sucked up in another matrix, right? When you don't stay 100% with the truth, when you exaggerate, when you sensationalize, I mean, there's a lot of valid stuff to critique Trump about. You don't need to be exaggerating and adding stuff that's not legit, legit. 
Case in point, there's a bunch of left-wing influencers right now pretending like Trump froze up on a call where I think a Fox host had a technical difficulty. They were gonna play something or show something. It didn't show up and Trump was just waiting to be asked a question and they're out there pretending like he froze up, right? So a right-wing liar can pick up on this and point out, look how the left-wing media is pretending like Please. Trump has an issue. Look how they're pretending like Trump froze up and he didn't. They're nothing but a bunch of liars. This is fake news, right? I mean, it's like, are you guys trying to help the right wing? Like even to this day, the suckers and losers thing, I'm not with that. I haven't seen enough evidence to be 100%. And I know how things work to where that could very well be something that's not true. How many times do we have to be misled before we get a little bit more skepticism, right? I'm not on board with anything against Trump or against Biden that I don't have solid evidence to support. But yet you have these talking points that they just go along with, right? Horse pace before, suckers and losers now. Even the thing about Trump saying, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and not lose any voters, right? And people will still debate on that. Yet have them watch the actual video. He said, they say I could, right? I don't believe nobody really said that. I think he made it up just like he always does or usually does. But the reality is he didn't say that as something that he was saying. He was claiming other people were saying that. But the average person on the left, the average progressive, they don't know that. And even me telling them and, and playing the video, they won't acknowledge that, right? They just get these talking points that they like and they keep repeating and everybody in their circles repeating it and they go along with it, just like the Trump supporters, man, right? They talk about Trump supporter, the gas price was so low and under him and black unemployment, whatever, whatever, whatever. I mean, the reality could be such that, you know, Biden did a much better job on all those points than Trump did, but they'll never know it because they just keep hearing that talking point coming from the people they listen to, right? Do they realize why gas was so low and that it had nothing to do with, with Trump? No right? They don't have the curiosity to look into it. Ironically, this guy says that he heard this guy tell him, you got to look into Trump, right? A lot of stuff that you're being told about Trump is not true. And he actually went and watched the, the, the full videos of him at these events. The crazy thing about it is when he watched those videos, and this is Trump is so unhinged that I would bet my life that in those, those events that he watched, Trump said a lot of crazy, unhinged things that shows somebody who's very unwell. I wish covered the oranges, the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation. You may also notice someone veering into incoherent ideas detached from reality. You know what I'd do if there was a shark or you get electrocuted? I'll take electrocution every single time. I'm not getting near the shark or an inability to complete simple sentences. Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat to... Uh... Other notable symptoms include impaired motor function, such as a wavering limb and decreased balance, often accompanied by a signature lean or arched stance. If someone you know is demonstrating several or all of these symptoms, they are seriously unwell. As a matter of safety, they must be relieved of critical responsibilities and disqualified from any position of authority. Somebody was crazy who doesn't know what the hell they talking about. But for some reason, this guy listening to Trump didn't pick up on that. All he did pick up on is some of the stuff they claim wasn't true. And that's probably valid, right? Because we know they do it all the time. They will pretend like Trump said something he didn't say. They'll exaggerate something. And if that's if he's looking at it from that mindset, then he probably did see stuff that, wait a minute, that's not what he actually said. He said something else. He said, they say, they cut that part out. They cut that clip up. They've been lying to me. And then the thing about it is, all you got to do is get him on a couple things like that and get him thinking like, oh, snap, the stuff I believed before is actually not true. Then after you get him with a few of those things, he just start discounting everything. Maybe everything I've been told is all a lie. Those people I've been listening to, they're all liars. This is what Trump's been saying. He's been saying fake news. And look at this. It was fake news. Wow. So then he just gets, you know, sort of, What's the word caught up in this whole thing of like that's all lies and then when you think about it is this is the person this is a group that's been pointing out these lies they've been trying to open your eyes to things right to the truth and now that you see the truth you're like whoa now he looks at these people as the truth tellers right because they demonstrated already to him that they're the ones telling the truth on these specific things right so just like how once he finds out that a couple of things he was told was lies now he discounts everything that they told so a lot of stuff that he was told could actually be the truth but based on these incidents, he probably just looked at they're all a bunch of liars. In the same vein, 
he looks at this other group who's pointing out that that group is lying. He says, based on, not that he says it, but this is just probably his reaction. A lot of people just how they react. Based on them proving themselves to him is like, we're the truth tellers. Like, we told you this and you don't want to listen. Now you see we're right on that. We're right on this other thing. So now based on those few things where they were, were supposedly right on, he's going to assume that all the other stuff that they're saying is right. Is he going to investigate all the other things that they're telling him? Or does he make a decision of what side he's going to be on? He's like, that side's lying. This side's telling me the truth. So now I'm on this side, right? So all interrogation is over. Right? He did one little interrogation of, of Trump. Is Trump really who they said he is? Watched the videos, came to the conclusion that Trump is not who they said he is. And now, again, just like how he was manipulated by the liberal media, right? Same how. This is not a new person. He's not, not somehow his critical thinking is better. The same way how he was manipulated by, by liberal media, now he's being manipulated by right-wing media in the same way. Because, again, the curiosity was only for a brief moment. When he had that moment of like, hmm, wait a minute, was I lied to? And then he go and try to investigate. And once he found out that, oh, they were lying, now his guard is down for the right-wing media. His guard is down for Trump. Right. But here's the thing. Trump is so consistently unhinged. I know he said some craziness in that in whatever he watched, but somehow this guy didn't pick up on it the same way he didn't pick up on liberal media that when they were lying to him. Right. I know whatever he was watching, Trump was unable to complete sentences, was able, unable to communicate effectively. Right. Showing signs of somebody with some kind of mental issue. But one thing that Trump does very well is communicate emotions. So he's able to tap into the emotions of the audience. People may make fun of him where he playing that dramatic music before he comes on the stage. And he comes out there and does the pauses and hugging the flag, right? One thing Trump knows is how to hustle. He knows how to manipulate people just like this guy talking to Ricky. He knows how to manipulate people to his side. To where if you make the average Trump supporter read the transcripts of what Trump says, they will challenge that the transcript is accurate because it's going to sound so crazy. Because what makes it work is Trump's performance abilities. Trump has to put on the performance. His words don't make sense. It sounds crazy, right? But to the target audience, the emotions that he communicates, they get caught up on that. But if you make them read the raw words, I always say that's a trick. You want to know what's really what? Have Trump supporters read the actual words of Trump. And more importantly, I think you should read it because they're already in disagreement with you. So words coming from you is not going to have that impact on them. The first thing they're going to say is he never said that. Guarantee you. Because now they're hearing Trump for the first time speak. The only way to really hear Trump speak is if you're a Trump supporter, you got to read his words. Because if you're listening to him, he's like the Pied Piper, right? He knows how to seduce that certain type of audience where he was saying stuff that don't make no sense, but they don't really, because it's emotions, right? What makes what he says not make sense? That's logic. But he's not communicating logic. He's not communicating facts. He's communicating feelings. And when you're dealing with feelings, it's illogical. That's the woman that's dating a guy that's beating her and you're trying to tell her to get away from him. And she's making excuses and say, he, he does it because he loves me. That's a Trump supporter. Right. When they hear the words, right, this woman dating a guy that's beaten, when she hears the words from the guy, and says, oh, honey, I love you. They actually believe that it connects to their heart and they're not thinking lies like this is a guy that just punched me in the face. And I just tell him he loves me. So, for example, this guy watching Trump speak, if you listen to his words, I mean, he's a hustler, man. So he's going to say things like, I love all people. I don't care about your skin color. And look, I got my one black guy here, African-American, whatever. Right. And, I, I, you know, I, I, this, this division in the country is no good. We got to unite. He's going to say all the words that, you know, conveys the message. He's, he's playing a part, right? He's a used car salesman. Of course, he's going to tell you, you're not going to get a better deal than this that we have right here. That's not true, but that's going to make you break out the checkbook. He's going to go and do everything to rile up a crowd and get them potentially to do something crazy. But somewhere in there, you're going to say peacefully and they're going to fall for it. They're going to disregard everything else he did, all the actions he took because he said peacefully at one point. Right. He could do a bunch of things that look suspicious, like this guy might be racist. But all he got to do is go on the speech and say, I love all people. I love all people. And then have a bunch of people about Trump, uh, blacks for Trump. Look, look, look at these people I have right here. If I was racist, would I have to? You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't really care about the country, but hug a flag. I'm hugging a flag. Look, look, I'm hugging a flag. That means I must love the country, right? That's how, that's how he gets down, man. That's what Trump does. Puts on a performance. Rea What's the best business Trump ever did? Reality TV reality tv that's what he does good with putting on a performance saying whatever it takes to get the votes right when things are looking bad he's going to ban stuff regarding guns going against the second amendment and then when that's not convenient yeah you know um they should revoke that ban all right he's he's he's, he's uh you know supporting banning abortions but then when it's when it's not convenient then it's kind of like oh you know well you know let the states decide right slippery guy Slippery guy, hustler, slick back hustler. That's what he is, man. Talking about immigrants, immigrants, immigrants. Meanwhile, he's hiring immigrants to work at his businesses. Talking about China, this, meanwhile, he got a China a bank account, right? Meanwhile, he have his, his clothing made in China, right? Fake, phony fraud. Ironically, these are the same type of things that got this guy to go over to the other side. 
The same way how there's a bunch of lies and misconceptions that Trump is putting out there and the right wing media putting out there, right? That he probably doesn't know about. That's the same thing that brought him to the right. It's 10 times worse. He thought that liberal media was lying to him. God damn. What is he being told now? I mean, he's basically supporting a liberal Democrat from New York City, billionaire Democrat from New York City, a guy who was friends with Jeffrey Epstein, a guy who will attack a child but won't attack Jeffrey Epstein even to this day, talking to Jeffrey Epstein's partner, talking about I wish her well, talking about, oh, maybe we shouldn't release the Epstein documents. This guy will literally jump away from the lies and manipulation told by liberal media to support a guy who is protecting a person responsible for child sex trafficking. That's who he's supporting. I'm, I'm a Trump guy. Child sex trafficking guy, right? Who was the guy that gave Epstein a sweetheart deal? That was the same guy that Trump hired. Trump, the same guy who talks about his own daughter's breasts. Trump, the same guy who was doing drag performance with Rudy Giuliani, right? That guy. That's who this guy has run to to avoid liberal media because liberal media legitimately told him some lies about some stuff. They were hyperbolic about some stuff. So you guys in progressive media, when you guys keep just jumping on what gets clicks and you're hyperbolic and you're exaggerating, you're pushing people like this guy to go support Trump, right? Trump is very seductive, right? He's very seductive, very effective at what he does. When you guys are sloppy, you're making people like him vulnerable to getting caught up in lies that make you guys look like you're just, you guys are saints, right? Liberal, liberal media definitely lies. Left wing media definitely lies. But compared to what Trump got going on, he make them look like they're saints. Mr. Upside Down Bible, pandering to the religious crowd, acting like a legitimate antichrist. It is what it is. This is the Baby Channel. The Baby Me comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that bell. Be well. Make your words have meaning. Don't go too far. Trump does something legitimately bad, stick to that, stick to the facts. Don't exaggerate. Don't go beyond, above and beyond with this stuff, right? If you really care, you think Trump's a threat, then stop helping Trump by being imprecise with your words.